from the shores of northern Florida, it's Skeeter Science. And we said, we use our data to reject or accept our hypothesis. But how do we know exactly when to do that? This is where statistics comes into play. Statistics allows us to quantitatively, that's actually putting numbers to it, know when we can accept or reject our hypothesis. So stats are actually really, really important for how we understand our data. So our objectives today, we're gonna to learn the importance of using statistics to describe our data, and we're gonna understand the meaning of the word significance. I used that in the previous section. Significance in science has a very specific meaning. Here it is. The significant difference is the difference between random chance versus non-random effects. So if something is significantly different, like our weight loss, then we would say, okay, the weight loss pill is actually causing weight loss. If it's random, you could run the experiment again and you might get different results. Broadly speaking, there are two types of stats. There's descriptive stats and statistical tests, also known as inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics, what's your sample size? What is how many people did you use in your experiment? What is the average, the median, and the standard deviation? These are commonly used to describe our data. Okay, the importance of stats. Let's look at this weight loss pill here. Does it actually cause you to lose weight? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is describe our data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use stats to basically describe our data from the two groups that are doing the miracle weight loss pill. Does it cause you to lose weight? Does it cause you to gain weight? Or do you stay about the same? So remember, group one, that took the placebo. That's our control group. Group two took the miracle weight loss pill. That would be our experimental group. Don't forget, we have two types of hypotheses. We have the null hypothesis. This is the hypothesis of no effect. Basically, we're gonna say the weight loss pill has no effect on weight. Does it cause you to gain weight? Does it cause you to lose weight? When we talk about weight loss, we mean significantly different. An alternative hypothesis would be the miracle weight loss pill causes significant weight loss, and of course, you could also have it cause weight gain as well. So is Eric Cartman gonna get to be lean, or is he gonna gain weight or stay the same? Okay, let's say we ran our experiment. And let's say this was part of an experiment where everybody was doing 30 minutes of cardio. So they did some cardio, and one group took the pill, and one group didn't. And you look at your average, 8.8 .8 or 9.9, .9, and you realize that there's this plus or minus 7.5 and plus or minus 5.4. That's our standard deviation. So the average, you guys know how to do the average. Basically, you take up all the weight loss and divide it by the total number of people. Okay, there's another type of statistic that's very important. It's called the median. That's the halfway point. The median says half the people lost this much weight or more, and half the people lost this much weight or less. So in our control group, the median is about 7.8. That means 50 people lost more than 7.8 pounds and 50 people lost less than 7.8 pounds. The next one is a standard deviation. Not everybody loses 8.8 .8 pounds in the control group or 9.5 pounds in the experimental group. There's variation. Some people lose a lot of weight some people lose very little weight. One thing when you look at the standard deviation, you'll realize that it's very, very large. And that should get you thinking. There's a lot of overlap between the averages and the standard deviation, which might signify that our results are not significantly different. Okay, did the pill work? A lot of you are probably thinking, I don't think it really worked. Okay, your intuition is good, but we're gonna use our data and analyze it using statistics to figure out whether or not it worked for real. So what's this significant difference? Significance has to do with randomness. Let's say I ran this experiment again. Would the control group have lost more weight than the experimental group? Or is it non-random? 
meaning the weight loss pill is causing more weight loss than the control group. And when we look at this, the averages are kind of close, but there's a lot of variation, which indicates that there's a lot of noise out there, that that result might be random. In stats, we use several different types of tests to determine the probability that these things are random versus not random. Mm -hmm. One is called a t-test, and this is used to determine the significance between the two groups. You're not gonna have to learn how to calculate a t-test in Bio 123, but you do wanna know how to um, interpret the data. Okay, so the question is, when do we accept or fail to reject our null hypothesis, or when do we reject our null? Now remember, if we reject the null hypothesis, we say the weight loss pill is causing a significant effect on weight. If we fail to reject our hypothesis or accept it, our null hypothesis, then we're saying it has no effect on weight loss. So how do we know when to do this? Okay, remember, if we reject the null hypothesis, we assume there's a significant difference in weight loss. Science has a very high standard for rejecting a null hypothesis. We wanna be 95% certain that the difference is due to the pill and not random chance. That's a very high bar to say with 95% certainty those averages are caused by the pill versus random chance. We use a statistical test like a t-test or an ANOVA to determine a p-value. You can think of p-value as probability. What's the probability that the two averages are due to random chance? we have a threshold. Remember, we want to be 95% certain that the difference is due to some effect and not random chance. So we have in science what is called the alpha value. Alpha value is 0.05. Think about this, this is 5%. So we're saying with an alpha value of 0.05 that there's a 5% probability or less that the difference is due to random chance. That's the exact opposite of saying 95% certainty we're saying less than 5% random chance. So with our 95% probability or more, the difference is not due to random chance, we're maintaining a very high bar in science. Okay, in our hypothetical experiment, we kicked out a p-value of a 0.39. Now what that basically means is that there's a 39% probability that the difference between the two averages is due to random chance. Now that's higher than 0.05. So we're saying, nope, we're gonna, re we're gonna accept that null hypothesis because there's no difference in the two averages. Even though there's a little bit difference, we're saying that difference is most likely caused by random chance. So if you were to run this experiment again, you would be just as likely to get a control group that lost more weight than the experimental group. So we're gonna accept our null hypothesis, we're technically failing to reject it, and we're gonna say, that weight loss pill has no effect on weight loss. So, statistical test. The difference between the two groups is due to random chance, not the pill. So in this case, you would use your data to go form an opinion and be like, eh, I'm not gonna go waste my money on that pill. The exercise worked just fine.